Why do politicians lie? That's a great question. My name's Eric. This is Bob My Pray Gary. Thanks for tuning in. If you could hit the like, hit subscribe. So why do politicians lie? Well, the short answer is because it works. Because people believe them. It's easier to fool somebody than to convince somebody that they've been fooled. So politicians lie over and over again to change the narrative, to support what they're doing. But the nice thing, at least for me, about economics is it's kind of hard to lie about math. If you say, like the Biden administration is saying, that the economy is great, we've had record growth, and gas prices are $5 a gallon, people just don't buy it, which is nice. Okay, at least they're being called out on their BS to some degree. But I found this blog on uh, whitehouse.gov, I'll link it in the description, that is top shelf level stuff. When you're faced with a reality that you don't like, what if, hmm, we change the definition? Instead of people starving to death, how about they're just um, taking a dirt nap due to involuntary diets? See, sounds so much better, and that way it's different. Um, so the White House talks about, <clears throat> in this blog post, how do economists determine whether an economy is in a recession? Now, why do you think they would write this? Is it because we're in a recession right now? Oh, oh yeah. And um, they want to soften the blow by maybe uh, redefining what recession actually is. You see, it's not that you can barely afford food because of recession. We're not even in a recession, so what are you talking about? You can afford food. And the person and the voter goes, hey, no, I can't because gas is $5 a gallon. We're not in a recession. <laughs> oh, these people are great. Okay, so reading from this blog post, at the top it says, what is a recession? Well, some maintain that it's two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitutes a recession. And those some would be everyone. Okay. Basically what uh, politicians do, they bring in experts. You've all seen this on like trials. Uh, the prosecution will bring in an expert that oh, really, really agrees with the prosecution. What do you know? And the defense will do the same thing. And they really agree with the defense. Why? Because they're paying them to do it. So when somebody agrees, experts say, um, it's because those experts are getting paid to say what the White House wants them to say. But all economists agree that a recession is GDP going down for two consecutive quarters. It is very hard, just like inflation, it's very hard to measure and encapsulate with one number what's going on in the economy. But these barometers are used and they often sway um, people's opinion. Because once the word recession comes out, and just keep in mind, I think it's coming out next week, then we're going to find out Q2 numbers. And if, if they were negative, then we're going into recession. Just that alone will make the market go, oh, no, even though we've been living in it for two quarters, which I find uh, kind of odd. But it is. It really shapes public opinion and it shapes if people want to invest or not invest and their outlook on the economy going forward. Once the, the numbers for a recession comes out and it's official, when it's a recession, it, it shapes public opinion. Therefore, these politicians have to lie and redefine what the word recession actually is. And they go on to say <coughs> about recessions, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. <gasps> Mm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's so funny. And I'm going to link a video at the end of this, um, or I'll put it at the end of the video, of uh, Kareen Jean-Pierre, Jean-Pierre, um, getting asked about this. And she just goes, jobs are great. People are having jobs in the job market. Keep in mind, uh, job market is not so great because job market participation is not great. And a lot of people who have jobs have three of them because they can't afford to live on one. Um, <clears throat> further down the article. Finally, although the unemployment rate is not on the committee's list, the fact that it has held at historic low of 3.6% in the past four months also has a bearing on the recession question. So they're really focusing on this unemployment. 
okay? If people are employed and not make, making enough money to, um, I don't know, feed their family and pay for a dwelling, you gotta wonder what they're smoking if they think the economy is good just because of unemployment. And these are the same people, by the way, that talked about adding a historic amount of jobs. The jobs that they cut, uh, during, the, the jobs that were added, uh, were jobs that were cut during COVID. So why do they lie? Because it works, all right? And uh, it's funny, when all else fails, they just change the definition. It's, you know, smoke screens and mirrors. And uh, we're in a recession, so um, uh, what do we got? Uh, Kareen, what do you gotta say? Uh, let's change the definition of recession. Perfect, genius. Okay, it doesn't matter that people still can't afford food, can't afford gas, that doesn't matter. Um, we'll just change the definition. Everything will be okay. Doesn't work that way. All right, guys, I'll link this in the description below. You gotta read it for yourself. Great stuff, straight from the White House. And uh, watch this next video. I'll see you guys in the next one, peace. Next week's a very big week for the economy. So I read the CEA blog. Is the White House trying to change the common definition of a recession because next Thursday the GDP numbers coming out are going to show that we've been in a recession? So let me say this. You know, the strength of our labor market along with the other economic uh, factors is what, what we generally see in a recession or even a pre a – pre, what is not what we generally see in a recession or even a pre-recession because we're seeing the strength of the economy and the labor market. So that's really important uh, to note there, there because those are uh, key elements as we talk about that, as folks keep asking us about that. So Americans across the country are back to work uh, at a historic level. 21 states, the most in history, have unemployed rates, unemployment rates at or below 3%. Uh, that is an important number to note. 14 states uh, are now at their lowest unemployment rates since this series began in 1976. And last month, the unemployment rate was a new low in eight states. So again, the strength of our labor market, along with the economic indicators, is not what we generally see uh, as we talk about uh, recession or even pre-recession. But the growth of the job for the three months trend, the growth of job growth in the U.S. is, is shrinking, is decreasing, and 7.5 million people, a growing number, are, are multi-jobs, meaning they have to work more than one job to afford a living. So is jobs really a good indicator? Oh, look.